On this week's joint of the week, we're gonna do one of the most popular joints in woodworking, the wedged mortise and tenon. This is a gorgeous joint used in furnitures, attaching legs to stretchers. It's used in workbenches all over the place. And it may look easy, but to be honest, this is my second time doing it. I'm gonna show you that quickly because it is terrible. So this is this is just a good reminder for me personally to you know remember that good woodworking takes good practice, and that's what joint of the week's all about. So. Let's fix our mistakes and lay out a mortise. So I'm gonna assume you have square milled stock. We're starting from that point. I'm gonna be attaching a piece of walnut to a piece of walnut with some maple wedges. So we're gonna put the maple aside for now. Now, when laying out a mortise, you need to consider a few things. One, for me, what I like to think about is what is going to make my life easier. Usually when you have to do mortise and tenon, you got quite a few of them to do. And so what I like to do is do them about the size of my router bit. We're gonna be using a half inch router bit. They're actually a really cool router bit. I'll show you in a minute. And this piece is one inch. And so what I'm gonna do is find the center of this board and lay it out at half an inch, ensuring that one, my router bit will cut it in one pass, not depth obviously, but one, lengthwise pass. And that way I'm taking off a very easily calculable amount from this piece, which is a quarter inch from each side. So to lay these out, what I like to do obviously first is find the middle. You could do that a lot of ways, exactly three inches. So our middle is inch and a half. Whenever I'm laying out mortises, I start with a pencil. And then when I know that it's where I want it to be, I'll move to a marking knife. And that marking knife line is gonna help you later when you're chiseling and also help you with your route. I'm gonna be using this really cool ultimate router jig that I built. It does all sorts of things. Um, I'll link the video right here in the corner, really cool. But all you really need is an edge guide for this. You just would need to place this and find the center. I'm also gonna be using this really cool half inch bit uh, from a company called Bits Bits. There's a discount code down below, a great company. And they put this really cool coating on router bits so they last forever, they're awesome stuff. Um, but the reason I like to use I like to use an upcut bit one because you need to clear chips on a mortise, otherwise everything's gonna get real hot in there and you could ruin the life of your bit or burn your wood. But also a spiral bit as opposed to a straight bit is a lot better at cleaner cuts and removing material. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up and then we'll head over to the table saw and cut our tent. Our mortise is done. One thing I didn't mention is when you're cutting it, you should label your inside and outside and make sure you get a really nice crisp line on the outside. And then you're gonna fit your tenon backwards. You're gonna test it from the outside because that's obviously where you want it to look the best. And then the inside, you know, I have a little bit of blowout here. Not a big deal because you're gonna have a lip all the way around your tenon that hides any imperfections. So for laying out our tenon, because this is a through mortise and tenon with wedges, I'm going to try and make it proud. Doesn't always happen, I might flush trim it, but it would be cool if we can keep about a quarter inch on it. So what I'm gonna do is set my distance with my stop block, and I'm just gonna take my stop block and slide my piece in between here, just like that, and then I'm gonna take it out a quarter inch. So I'm gonna just slide the micro adjust over here a quarter inch and that's gonna make me proud. So now that I have my tenon shoulder laid out, probably best practice to lay that out with a marking knife on your piece. Now for actually cutting your tenon, it's the reason we leave a little bit extra is we can use that as a test. Make sure you're using a flat bottom blade or a dado stack because I don't have a lot of material to roof here. I'm just gonna use my regular blade. But if you had a big tenon, it'd be easier to use a dado stack. I know you Europeans don't have those. So I'm gonna measure from the outside of the board. You basically wanna take the height of your mortise and subtract it from 
the height of your board and then divide that by two and that's gonna be the height of your blade. So we're gonna go ahead and do some test passes and then do some final passes. You want it to be pretty darn snug because whether you use a dado stock or a regular 10 inch blade, you're gonna have some marks on there that you're gonna to wanna to clean up with some hand plane. So you're gonna take off another very, very, very teeny amount. So if it's really snug now, when you clean up the tenon, it's, it's gonna fit perfectly. So now we need to drill our relief holes, which will keep this from splitting all the way down, and our kerfs. You can easily cut this with a handsaw, but I find that the size of the wedge that comes with a handsaw kerf is just super thin, and if anything sort of binds up, you're gonna snap them off and end up, you know, having one, a very thin line for your wedge, which I think it doesn't look as cool as maybe a little bit thicker one, and also you risk breaking it off. So I'm actually gonna cut this kerf with my table saw, and then we're gonna drill holes here. Uh, and easy way to place holes equally when you're doing an odd number is divide by one more than you're trying to do. So I need two holes, so I'm gonna take this length, one and a quarter, and divide it by three, which is 0. .41 and two thirds roughly, which is roughly 13, 30 seconds. Don't worry, I'm not that fast at math. I looked this up before we started recording. Okay, so now that we have our curves cut, it is time to cut our wedges. And here's a great little trick I learned about how to cut consistent, slow tapering wedges. You really want these wedges to be super consistent. Otherwise, you're gonna have something that looks geometrically just sort of off. So what I do is I take something that's about a little, right around double the thickness of the wedge that I want. So we're shooting for an eighth inch length. That's what's going to spread that out. And you're gonna take that piece that's about double the thickness of the wedge that you want and double stick tape that to the edge of your board. And you want it to sit above the surface of your board because you don't want it to get out of square this way. So that's gonna ride along your fence. Then you're gonna take your sawtooth and start it right at the edge of your board. And you wanna make sure it's right at the edge because you're gonna need to reference the edge later again. So this is gonna help you be consistent. So you can see that's just right. That tooth is exactly even with that edge. Now I'm gonna run it through and when I'm done, I'm gonna flip it around so that the part that I cut the wedge from is flat against the fence. And then I'm gonna align the edge of the board again with that final tooth. I'll bump my fence over and that's gonna give me two perfectly consistent wedges. So let me show you how I do it. Now we're just about ready to glue this up. First we need to clean up our tenon, just get rid of these saw marks. Now that we have our wedges cut and sized, uh, that's one thing I forgot to mention over at the table saw, it's probably easier to do that wedge thing if you cut it to the right width of your tenon first. So I just go in sideways and you wanna do them at the same time. So I just go until you get like a friction fit and then you wanna tap them at the same time. Cause again, you really want that even line in the middle. So you gotta remember glue is gonna get in there and start make things start to swell. So you wanna mark them about right where they bottom out here. And then once you figure that out, then you can just cut them, you know, about halfway down your tenon. Cause there's no way once glue gets in there, you're gonna get these things all the way down. It, glue just sort of binds everything up no matter what you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these making sure that my wedges are even up here. For measuring the length of our wedge, you wanna go roughly, and this is rough, cause you're gonna hit these in with a hammer, but maybe like two thirds of the way down. I'm just gonna mark mine right above the hole. And trust me, this seems like, oh, it's just a wedge, but this makes all the difference in the world of the look. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them off here. This is again, the bottom. 
And then I'm not going to cut right at my height line. I'm going to cut above that one because it's going to give us a thicker thing to hit with a hammer. Two, it is going to make them less likely to break when you're putting in because you get a little bit more material and you're going to flush trim it off later. So I'm, I'm going to cut above, not too far above because you want to make sure that they go in equally and the bigger they are, the easier it is to mess that up. So now we have our wedges, make sure you label them which way is up because otherwise you're going to forget and put one in backwards and mess up your whole joint. Now let's glue it up. Guys, that came out really cool. I love the way that looks. And it is so imperative when you do that, that you take your time with the wedges because you really want them to be equal and the same width and all that stuff. So use those tricks I showed you for getting equal size wedges and just take your time when you're cutting the outside face of your mortise because that's obviously what's going to show. So uh, let me know what you'd like to see on the next joint of the week. I love doing this series and I love learning. Again, this was my second try. I had a big fail the first time and I'm so happy we nailed it this time. So get out in the shop, get some practice done, stay safe and have a wonderful day.